Enough talk. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Wash Sports Podcast. All your Seattle sports, all in one pod. I'm your host, Lestro, but we got a whole bunch of people here uh, working on the team, including Marku, who we're going to hear from in a little bit. And, and yeah, we're just a bunch of East Coast guys who live here now in Seattle, and this is a great sports town. So we've decided to cover it as it deserves to be covered. So here's the deal. You can count on us to be homers. We're here to cover the teams, we're here to analyze the decisions, and we're here to second-guess everybody. But make no mistake, we're rooting for Seattle every time. Unless they're playing the Phillies, of course. So that's it. All your Seattle sports, all in one pod. If it happens in Seattle sports, it comes out in the wash. We got a big show today. Let me bring in my man, Marku. Marku, how are you doing this week, buddy? I'm great, Lester. How you doing? I am doing well. We got a big show this week. We're going to talk about the uh, the UW softball down there at the uh, Women's College World Series. The Sea Wolves, the Seattle Sea Wolves, are headed back to the playoffs with a big win to uh, to defend their MLR title. The storm season is going. Uh, I guess we'll. Have to talk about the Mariners. They're still playing. We got Sounder stuff to talk about. We're going to do our South Sound wrap. Uh, big show this week. Uh, but I want to I want to start with with a little thing I saw in the news today, Marco. Did you see that the uh, the Seagulls are no more? Uh, Seagulls, we I hardly knew ye. Uh, now don't uh, don't fret. They're not getting rid of the uh, the whole cheerleading squad. It's still around. It's just no longer called the Seagulls because they're letting men uh, in. Finally, letting men onto the team, and they're now just the Seahawks dance team. Uh, I saw this Bro, today. I'm stoked. Yeah, I think it's I'm great. I, 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 I can finally have a chance to be a Seahawk. I <laughs> get you down there on the field. <laughs> can finally get you on the field of CenturyLink, man. So I'm saying. Uh, I love this. The only thing I don't love about this, I have to say, uh, I, you know, I love that the inclusion, I think it's great. I think it'll make the team better. Uh, I think that the dance team, uh, as exciting as it is, uh, it's it's always good to have anybody who wants to be a part of it be able to be a part of it. Uh, I, I'm going to miss the word Seagals, man. It is such... Such a great name uh, for that squad. I understand it's a little bit sexist, but it's just such a great sort of pun that I'm sorry to see that go. So, uh, so pour one out for the word "seagals" here on uh, uh, on the wash. Uh, we hardly knew ye, uh, seagals. We speak your name, but uh, great to have the inclusive team, and uh, look forward to seeing them uh, doing even bigger and better things on the sidelines this year. I guess. No, I feel you, but I gotta ask, you know. Well, you know, we can still keep the name the Seal Gals. We'll just have the Sea Bros included. You know, it's, you know, we'll, be, we'll all be on the same 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 field dancing. It sounds good. I love this too because I actually have my chance to get down there uh, and join the team as well. Now, I'm not I'm not going to be one of the ones you know at the base of the pyramid, but a scrawny guy like me, I finally get to be thrown around. You know, it'll be like uh, like crowd surfing back in the day. That sounds awesome, man. Doing that at Century Link instead of doing that at the Kingdom. That sounds right. Right, it's the way to go. All right, so let's uh, let's talk a little sports here. Of course, we uh, we want to start uh, with the UW Huskies softball team, the Lady Huskies. Hashtag Mighty are the women, and mighty they were on their world uh, women's world women's college World Series run. Here uh, came up just a little bit short. But a great run uh, by the Huskies began Thursday in that East Coast bias game at 9 a.m. Marku, I didn't. Uh, I didn't see this one. I was at work because of the East Coast bias, but uh, it is an extra uh, extra innings thriller uh, that they uh, that they lost uh, sort of out of nowhere in a surprise. They were so hot coming in, and then to lose this one uh, in the eighth inning against Arizona was was just a, a, a shock. Uh, the pitching was there, the hitting was not uh, through most of this game. Uh, is is how it seems to have gone on this one. And then uh, Saturday, they in the, in the losers bracket, trying to get their way back in there. Big day Saturday, double header uh, out there. Uh, Gabby Plain starts the game in and, and a five three win against Minnesota. Uh, has a, another great day out there. Plain uh, six point two innings pitched, ten strikeouts. Uh, that is her third game of, of ten or more strikeouts this postseason. It's uh, she's only the uh, the second Husky uh, ever to do that. 
uh, 10 or more strikeouts. Incredible game. Uh, but once again, not a big bat game for this team. Uh, just enough to get through. Uh, and then uh, and at the end of the game, uh, Taryn Alvello, and remember that name, comes in for the save. Uh, she just gets the last out. Uh, she got the, the final out of the game. Uh, one out gets the save, right? So she gets the save in the first game. They win this game, and now they're headed off uh, to play uh, another game that night uh, against uh, Oklahoma State. Uh, and and, and Taryn Alvello pitches that one uh, there, Marku. This is it, this is crazy to me. Just uh, and turns in a performance for the ages. They want to. They're going to want to start everybody uh, the night before with uh, with one batter after a performance like this, man. Uh, you can't say enough about the pitching. Uh, to Taryn Alvello, who's uh, her senior, it was her final run as a Husky, and she was just absolutely phenomenal throughout it. Um, the, the Utah bats just didn't show up, and that's uh, that, that's really what the storyline is from this past weekend because. Even though Taryn gave up that, uh, you know, walk off against Arizona on Thursday in the first game of the series, it, it was his offense not showing up. They went to, to the, the eighth inning, one tied one to one. Yeah. And, you know, in, in three out of the four games, they they only scored more than one run, uh, you know, just just once. Just so, the one time in that, uh, in that, yeah, in that one five time. three. Right. And Taryn Alvello was a stud, man. I, she she was absolutely phenomenal. 16 she really strikeouts. Set yeah, it's gonna be sad to see her leave and not be a Husky anymore. Uh, the future is very bright with the the young squad and some of the freshmen that are coming up. Uh, you're gonna take take over this team, but uh, man, I got got to give it up to her. Yeah, 16 strikeouts, complete game, uh, seven innings, three hits, 16 strikeouts game. That's the the most batters in a women's uh, women's college World Series game since 2012. Uh, and and her yeah. career high. They were they and, and this game uh, that they they won won nothing. They put a runner on base in every inning and still failed to to push people across. So they uh they were getting getting people on the bag one way or another. Seven hits in the game, couldn't push the runs across. So that sets them in. That win uh, puts them into the uh, the final uh, the final final game for them. Uh, a game against UCLA. If they win it, they go to the championship game. And this is another. Uh, extra inning thriller for the the Huskies, and and once again the bats fall short for them in this one, Marco. Yeah, so, so so the theme continued there, and they just couldn't string together hits. So they got people on base here and there, but they just couldn't bring them across, and uh, it was really frustrating. I mean, you got to give credit to their uh, to Rachel Garcia who hit the who who pitched a, uh, a, a complete game and then hit the walk off in the tenth inning to make it three to nothing, uh, so to win it. Uh, you gotta give credit to her, but the bats just didn't yeah, show up. Honest to God, that's a dream day. Hits. That's a that's yeah, a Joe Carter style. What an uh, incredible day! And UCLA, they're doing their work. They they won the first game of the World Series, thirteen to three yesterday. So uh, they you know they they give credit to those ladies, but man, it's just really disappointing to see those bats really come up short uh, in such a big weekend. Uh, once again, though, another uh, great performance by Gabby Plain uh, in that game. She pitched uh, she pitched six full scoreless innings to start the game and uh, retired ten in a row from the third until the seventh when Taryn Avello took over. Uh, she uh, and and Avello in that had three innings pitched. She gave up three hits, but four strikeouts, uh, 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 four more strikeouts for a three hundred strikeout season. Uh, again, though. The bats didn't show up in this one, and the uh, the Huskies fall to UCLA in ten innings, three nothing on a, on a girl that does does everything. That is up, that is a backyard sort of sort of uh, a game. You know what I mean? Like when you're a kid, you're like, ah, oh, pitch the mm-hmm. perfect game and then hit the home run. It, it's it, <laughs> impossible to think it would happen. But it's like it video is. game stuff. Yeah, it really is. So a great season for the uh, for the Washington Huskies ends uh, just short of the goal again. Again, uh, just short of the goal for this team. Seems like seems like we're saying that every year, Marku. Just short, but yeah, they have they haven't won since two thousand and nine, but they're always just on the cusp, and they are, they really have a great young squad going forward. So there's a lot to look forward to. Nothing to really kind of uh, be down on. It was really great to see um, see uh, uh, well, it was great to see Taryn to get that to get that pitch in that last game, get those four innings in. Uh, you know, just to have her pitch one last time as a dog, that, that was special. Yep, finally get it. Uh, not not finally, but finish it out uh, on the team like that. Would have liked to have seen it go all the way, but uh, a great, uh, great career for her and a, a great run for the dogs. 
All right, so let's uh, let's move on to a team that is headed into their playoff run on this one, Marku, and that is the Seattle Seawolves. The Major League Rugby champion Seattle Seawolves are headed back to the uh, the playoffs uh, in their uh, attempt to defend their uh, their championship here. Marku, when last we left our heroes, they ran into a surprise tie in a game at home that they should have won, making this past weekend's game. Uh, one that actually mattered in a, in a way that it probably shouldn't against Austin. Now, Austin, worst team in the league, bottom of the table. I don't think they had a win this year uh, uh, coming into this game. Seawolves take care of business. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, this is Austin, worst team in the league. They didn't get a single win this season. Uh, and the, the Seawolves secured a playoff spot with a 38-26 win at home. It was the final game of the season, so they really have to make sure they got that win after that tie against Utah, like you mentioned. Uh, really big game, uh, good crowd on hand. They really came up uh, big in the first half and scored 31 points. To really uh, lay down the offense early. Um, not so much in the second half, but they, you know, they held it down, got the win. Big points. Only top four teams in the MLR make it to the playoffs. So uh, big victory, and they got they earned a home home game against uh, Toronto this Sunday. Right, and that's the big deal. They get the uh, the home game uh, here in the playoffs, and that is that is great news uh, because. Starfire rocks. This was, uh, a, 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 what, their 145th consecutive sellout over the two seasons that they've been playing. This team has sold out every game uh, down there at Starfire in Tukwila, and it's it's one of those loud Seattle crowds, man, the shake-the-building kind of crowds that make it happen. Uh, and just a, just a great game uh, for for the Seawolves. They had one, I, man, I, I can't find it here, but I, I saw one play in the game that just went, went the distance all the way down the field. Like uh, I think it was one pass, just guys got outside really Really just great play, and then held on at the end uh, uh, to win it. They are headed into the playoffs. What's their playoff uh, look like here, Marku? Yeah, so like you mentioned, the home field advantage is going to be absolutely crucial. We're just a different team when we're on home versus uh, on the road. Uh, we played Toronto twice this season. We split this ho- the series. Uh, at home, we won 35-30, to 30, and on the road, we got smashed 29-7. So definitely a big impact to be at home. Uh, you know, uh, It's, it's going to be a tough one. Not, it's really going to be hard to call. The top four teams in the ML, MLR were really within two points of each other uh, when it was all said and done. So it's going to be a very exciting playoff series this year compared to last year, especially. So this game is uh, is Sunday. It is at Starfire. It is probably sold out. If it's not, you might want to get down there for it. Oh, it's uh, sold out. It's sold exact out. capacity. I think standing room's even uh, full. So. Good well, luck. Just try to watch the game on TV. Just well, give, good news. Ready. It is on CB, <laughs> CBS Sports uh, Network uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, they're airing the game uh, at 6 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, Toronto Arrows at the Seattle Seawolves. Uh, first game of the playoffs, defending the uh, defending the shield. Uh, so uh, so uh, what is their hashtag? Together we hunt is, is the Seattle Seawolves. Uh, we'll be following that this weekend, of course, and, uh, and you should too. And uh, we will, of course, get back to it next week and let you know how that one turned out. All right, Marku. What do we have next here? We have the from the Sea Wolves. We get into the uh, the Seattle Storm, who have started yeah. their season, uh, and this this season uh, started with a big win against the uh, Phoenix Mercury uh, last week. Uh, big win, uh, especially an emotional win there, as they were were got their rings that night, but had uh, Brianna Stort and and Sue Bird both on the sidelines, both uh, presumably out for the season, uh, but the, notched the big win against the Mercury. And then, uh, then headed on the road to take on the Minnesota Lynx, where didn't quite go as planned. Yeah, so they uh, they've had a little bit of a stumble since the start of the season. They're, they've been two and two. Uh, they had a road trip. They went one and two one. Uh, they lost against the, the Lynx in the first game. But Natasha Howard, she's just been phenomenal, kind of stepping into play for uh, Sue Bird and, and Brianna Stewart being out. Uh, she's scored double digits in every game so far. Uh, in that loss against the Lynx, she had twenty one points. Uh, and you know she was dominant, so it, she's she's been fun to watch. Uh, Jewel Lloyd too, who's been really great. A lot of a lot of you're seeing a lot of contributions from everyone, so uh, it, it's been it's been fun to see people kind of shine as the injuries kind of kind of pulled up. Yeah, Natasha Howard, 19 points, 14 rebounds in that first game, uh, 21.17 rebounds in the next one. Uh, there, that is the uh, the the loss against the Minnesota Lynx, and uh, I'm sorry, the the win against the Atlanta Dream. Uh, uh, on Friday, and then the loss against the Chicago Sky on Sunday, and then uh, then they played uh, at home tonight. Uh, we're recording this; it's uh, it's Tuesday night here in Seattle. It's probably Tuesday night everywhere in the world. Uh, that they, uh, <laughs> or at least in the country, uh, they uh, they they uh, played Minnesota Lynx at home tonight. Pulled out a big win. 
yeah, great game tonight. They had a 84 to 77 win at home. Uh, just another great performance from, from, uh, you know, from uh, Natasha Howard. And this time, uh, Jordan, Jordan Canada put up 19 points. Now she's Sue the Lord one, Jordan Canada is the one filling in for, uh, for Sue Bird here, right? She's actually taking the Sue Bird spot and at, at uh, uh, on the roster, right? Right. This is her second year in the WNBA. Last, last year she was a rookie. Uh, so she, she's just, uh, kind of taking that place and, you know, Jewel Lloyd too, man. She's, she's, uh, she is a protege of Kobe Bryant. She's called, she's been given the nickname, the gold Mamba. She's been stepping up her game as well. She, uh, tonight she put up seven, uh, she added 19 points and she's also been, been adding a lot to the offensive end. Uh, one thing that the, the storm had been struggling with is turnovers. They've been turning the ball over a lot. Uh, it might be just because early in the season. Um, but they kind of got to get that figured out right away. Cause, uh, it's definitely been the issue on the road. Well, this, uh, this, this snapped a, uh, uh, an unbeaten streak for the Minnesota Lynx. So the Seattle Storm getting a, getting a big win at home against the uh, so far undefeated uh, Minnesota Lynx, giving them their first loss. Storm now 3-2 and two and head into a game this Sunday uh, against the Chicago Sky. Back to Chicago uh, to, uh, to take, on, take on the Sky again. Uh, so 3-2 Storm. Actually doing better this season, uh, I would think, than, than we thought they might, uh, given the injuries that they're suffering in the beginning. Still uh, still a contender. like to see that. Definitely. Fight definitely their- a fun team to still watch, and I, I would definitely still try to make it out to Everett or when they get out to Edo. They're, they're going to be a good team, uh, even without Brianna Stewart and uh, Sue Bird this year. All right, Marku. I think we've put this off long enough. All right. Let's talk about the Mariners. Do so we have to? Yeah, yeah, we do. All right, all right. Well, the Mariners are now twenty-five and thirty-eight in the season, They're dead last in the AL West. Not much to say, man. We've been really bad. We had a, a we've had a home stretch, three straight series at home, and it's just been awful. Uh, finished up the the series against the Rangers last week, and you know, just a couple losses there. Uh, lost two out of three against the Angels, and uh, or two out of, three out of four against the Angels, and now we're just getting smacked by the, the Astros. So it's been terrible for the the Mariners. Yeah, I think that's the key word is terrible. And this has just been terrible baseball. This Mariners team has been bad. I say, you know, that game on Monday night, you were at that game on uh, on Monday night. They had, a, you know, a uh, it's something I'd, I've never seen before in a, in a Major League Baseball game happen in that when nobody covered home plate. The shortstop uh, oh. made a play, threw it home like you're supposed to when a guy's running home, and the catcher wasn't there. He was running up to cover the first base bag. The ball literally rolled across the plate uh, in front of the umpire as the runner crossed the plate. Nobody there to cover it. I got to tell you, Marku, that's a great metaphor for what's going on right now uh, uh, for the Mariners. There ain't nobody home on this team right now. And, and <laughs> yeah. it is just uh, errors and mistakes all around. They are giving games away. They've been getting their ass handed to them. It's not even, it's not even that they're just losing. They've been getting their ass handed to them, Marku. This is not a good team. It's playing terrible baseball. I saw a stat, I think it was Larry Stone uh, tweeted this out, where he said that since the 13-2 and start, this team has played a 250 ball. They've lost three out of every four games that they've played since that 13-2 since that and two start. That is awful. That, oh, and, oh, man, we, we, we saw the best April in, in Mariners history, but then they followed it up by the worst May in Mariners history, like, yeah, it's just it's just literally so 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 symbolic of what this team is just kind of kind of going to be for the next few years. I feel like it's really concerning for me because I'm not seeing any of the prospects that are kind of getting the opportunity to come up here do much. Uh, JP Crawford got hurt. Shed Long's not doing much. Um, I'm not a fan of Alex Smith at all. Uh, it's just it's just really worrisome. I, I know it's just bad baseball and it's part of a process, but it's so terrible. Yeah, and uh, you know we talked about that. You said this is the worst May. This is literally the worst May in team history. They went seven and twenty-two uh, in May. The worst May in team history. The team ERA is above six. Uh, it had been in in April. It was at like in the first month. It was it was like four point five. Uh, they've given up more home runs. They've given up more walks. Uh, the uh, the bats and here's on the other side the bats have actually had fewer walks we talked about this when the season started that they were a lot of play discipline this is where where I thought they might be able to put something together it wasn't just because all of a sudden they were thirteen and two they were thirteen and two because they were you know sitting back and 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 you know. 
taking the walks and and not not making stupid mistakes. They are uh, they are now uh, at at uh, at fewer walks. They are two point nine walks per game uh, right now in, in May. That is terrible. They were at four point two uh, before. And and the worst of it all. And this is this is the worst part for me. Again, it's the metaphor. Nobody home throwing it home. Still the worst defensive team in baseball, and it's not even close. Like, like not even uh, miles away. The next, the next closest team, like it, it is. Uh, it, uh, let's see. The, error, the the Mariners had sixty six errors in the month of May. Sixty six errors in the month of May. <laughs> the next team, I think, was the White Sox, had forty seven. They are twenty errors ahead, and this is the most infuriating part for me as a fan and a baseball watcher because. If you just take care of the fundamentals, you don't yeah. lose by as many. And what we're supposed to be watching here, we knew this was going to be bad. We knew this team was not going to be particularly good. They're not built to be good. They don't have the players to be good. They're built to see what they can do with the players they have. They're uh, taking some salary, putting some guys out there, and, and and seeing what the prospects can do. And now they're not even doing it. You mentioned that, too. The prospects aren't even playing. We lost Crawford. That hurt, actually, because he was one of the prospects that was playing pretty well. He was hitting 279 uh, and had... Of all the errors the team was committing, he had just two of them in 144 <laughs> chances uh, at shortstop and uh, lost him to injury, I think it was last Thursday, uh, the 29th. Uh, just as just as a note, in his 144 innings, he had two errors. Uh, Tim Beckham, playing shortstop when uh, J.P. Crawford's not there, had 12 errors in 336 innings. I didn't do the math to get the ratio, but I'm telling you it's not close. That is not good. <laughs> uh, that You don't want that uh, out there. So just... Hey. I, I gotta say something. Speaking of someone not knowing being home, like we're the fans, bro. Like I was, I've been at the games the last. I know, I know this is a bad team. Don't well, that's just wrong. it. I, I know, I know. But look, we, I, I'm, I'm from. I guess it's come. I'm from New York. I don't know because Met fans show up for the most part. But like, well, we you know, just, you know hey. New York. There's nothing else to do in that city. There's nothing else to do in that city. We're talking about. It. Come on, man. I mean, I, we got a lot of people there. I'll, I'll give them that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but it, it's just. It's not just how empty it is. It's it's just there's something, and I get the teams have been bad for a very long time, but it's just. Well, the, that's, it's, it's, it, I think it's. I think it's, passiveness is real in 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 the the mayor in in T-Mobile Field, man. Like you really like the Astro fans took over the the stadium yesterday, and it was a Monday. It was so weird. Well, I got it. It was it. The, it's. It's bad baseball, and that's what it is. The problem is that there's really nothing to root for right now. It's all the errors on the field. You expect there to be, uh, you expect there to to at least be uh, co- uh, competent baseball put on by a professional team, and the Mariners are not that defensively right now, and that affects the pitching. That we know the bats. Uh, we always, I, I like to say they have a puncher's chance. They have less of a puncher's chance anymore, and the the problem is because the pitchers don't trust the fielding. Uh, as soon as as soon as anything gets by, you can see the shoulder slump. We talked about Kikuchi was the bright spot last week. This week, he gets lit up. He was in for, what was it, 3.1 innings uh, the other day, uh, and and six runs in 3.1 innings in a, in a 9-3 loss uh, against the Angels, who is the team that they were beating up in the beginning of the year. That was the one we wanted to play all the time, because we could beat them. Uh, and so Kikuchi couldn't uh, couldn't get there. Marco Gonzalez has been like crap in his past seven starts. He's lost six of them. The team's lost all seven uh it's it he's not playing well there now granted some of that is some defensive fault uh, there's not always earned runs involved in theirs uh because because the all the errors but they're not fun to watch it's it's uh, we knew they'd be bad we knew they'd be processing it's just it's just not fun to watch and i don't know who to blame you know like i don't i don't i don't know if this is is, is this service i mean we got to you know, when we talk about the process, I say this is processing. I'm a, I'm a Sixers fan, right? You know, I, I was there for the process years, and I bought in, man. I was totally in for it because they had a plan. I love it. That's We got a plan, I'll follow it. I can trust the process. It's what the Astros did. The team that we're losing to this week is the team that we should be and are trying to emulate. Now, the Astros had the number one draft pick for, for three straight years. They were the worst team in baseball for three straight years. That's a long time, and I don't know if the Mariners can hang that long. Especially with you know collecting the fans that they have right now because they're not buying in because the team the the players the prospects that they have don't seem to be guys to watch. Uh, that their farm system is getting better, uh, but it's still not what you'd hope. Uh, Justice Sheffield uh, is getting shellacked down in in Tacoma, and he was supposed to be uh, the big hope uh, down there as well. 
Uh, so I don't know, man. It's just that's why people no, aren't fair. showing. It, it's, it's it's fair. I get it. I get it. But like, man, we have to we have to kind of show up in some way. I mean, even when the team was really good in the beginning of the season, the stadium was overrun by the opponents' fans. And so I, I get the man. It's bad baseball, but you got to show up, man. We lost a, a franchise once, like. It, uh, honestly, like I know, you know, Safeco or T-Mobile is a, a destination that's probably going to be there for a while. But like, that one was stolen. Uh, I want to I want to be clear about that. That was that was fucking stolen. It was stolen, man. We but lost we, that. We it did, lost, there's nothing we, we could have done. Lost the, okay, I get that, but we almost lost the Seahawks. Once we almost too, lost like, the Mariners a while ago. Like, like we we've almost lost all of our teams before. You know, it's not like it's not like it's a safe situation here in Seattle uh, by any means. Like, it's, I don't know. We lost one team. I, it, it, it just and I gotta tell you, fear in my mind. That is the worry. That is the big worry. Is is fans starting to think that? And not only that, but this is a process. You know, like th- this step back, this rebuild that the Mariners are going through right now, that they initiated last year with all the big trades and everything. We we'll get to a big trade that they made this week as as well, real quick here. Uh, but mm-hmm. all of this is designed uh, to 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 make you better for the future, and it's it's going to take time. And it's hard to it, you have to buy into it, and it's the fans. It, can't start freaking out because if the fans freak out, then the process goes to shit because the management freaks out. The hardest thing in all of this is being bad, and and it's not. It, people say, "Oh, you're tanking." No, that it's not that simple. It's uh, it's it, tanking. You no, can, yeah. tanking. You can almost watch. Uh, this is not tanking. This is this is a teardown. This is this is finding diamonds. This is uh, looking for castoffs from other teams. I mean, our bullpen is the island of misfit toys out there. Those those are guys no one wants, and that is part of the problem. Some of them can throw. Some of them can't. And 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 not all of them can. None of them can do it consistently. And, and it's just. It's a mess right now, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. That is the worst part about this, Marco. It's going to get worse through this summer, and it's going to get worse mm-hmm. because we're going to lose guys. Uh, anybody who's doing well is not going to be a Mariner by September. But I got to think right. September is actually going to be pretty fun. I got a hunch that the kids start to finally put it together and get their shit together and finally figure it out somewhere around September. And they win some games, but the summer I think is going to be the dog days because they are just going to be shedding, shedding contracts, shedding players, and and really just digging themselves deeper. We saw the first step of it this week. Uh, speaking of big trades, uh, when Jay Bruce, who was acquired in a big trade, got shipped out in a big trade to the Philadelphia Phillies. Jay Bruce just recorded his 300th home run as a Mariner, <laughs> and then got traded. I love that. Uh, so he made his way to the Philadelphia Phillies uh, in return for 23-year-old infielder Jake Shiner, uh, who is playing, I think he's double A, he's a double A ball player down there. Uh, Jay Bruce, Philly gets Jay Bruce and $18 million of his $21 million contract this year. So a Mariner's eating a shit ton of money. Phil's need him uh, with the injury to McCutcheon, by the way. That's going to be a big deal. And uh, down yep. there, he actually tonight in, in San Diego, he's hit two home runs, including a, a grand slam. So Jay Bruce uh, showing wow. out. Showing out for the Phillies already um, down there, but that is actually you know you talk about he had to take eighteen million. There was some there was some scuttlebutt about this that they had to give him eighteen million to take Jay Bruce. That's actually still a win for the Mariners, and the reason is because they got Bruce uh, in a D, in the deal for Cano and Diaz from the Mets. So they shed you know it's a sixty million dollar plus e- even eating that eighteen million dollars uh, for Diaz. Now they got they got. Him along with uh, Jared, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Kellner, uh, uh, Kellix. Uh, he's the, the outfield. He's the top prospect in the organization. And, uh, and yeah, Selenik. I think it's Selenik. Is that? Yeah. Am I crazy? Yeah, yeah something like uh, that. Selenik. Kellenic. Kellenic. Yeah, he's great, man. I'm yeah. excited to see him. He's been moving up quickly through the minors, and he he's been fun. Yes, he has turned out to be uh, so far in the minor leagues. He is the guy to watch uh, on his path. That we can have some hope coming up as Mariners fans to see where he's going to get there. So, I mean, this is uh, this uh, seeing Bruce leave and go somewhere else. He he st- it was performing. Uh, he's going to be a guy that uh, anybody on this team, everybody's available. Basically, anybody who's not under team control uh, is going to be available. If they if they if they got to pay you, if they got to pay you to take him, you can take him. So that means we're probably going to see. Uh, Encarnacion gone. We're probably going to see. We might see D. Gordon gone. That's totally cool. That, that's cool, man. I mean, I would hate to see D. Go because he was fun last year. But if we lose Edwin and we lose uh, Domingo and all those guys, totally, totally fine with that. That's totally the process. Now, Seager, Seager will stay because his contract is terrible. Yeah. 
Uh, and Terrible, uh, yeah. and the other two, the big question marks are Haniger and Gonzalez. Now we talked about Gonzalez uh, shit in the bed over his past couple of starts, but uh, the kid's got the arm. He should uh, he, he should be fine. And uh, and uh, and Mitch Haniger, all star. He's also been uh, really bad this year, uh, doing a, a yeah. missing the ball quite a bit. But that said, former all star can probably put it together. You got to figure that these two guys. Uh, are, are on the team like oh what are we doing you know like that's it just a, it, the clubhouse right now has to be not a lot I, of fun. I think you're right yeah I think you're right I think I think Mitch is a, a piece but uh, I think he, he's turning you know he's becoming a smaller piece uh you know as more time goes along I mean last year we were we were he was the all-star the, the king you know the you know the bright and shining armor for the next season but this year he's just coming up short man it's kind of his value his value's going down he's kind of I mean, I never thought of him as a franchise player, but definitely, you know, his 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 value's taking a hit this year. And and honest to God, it really is one of those situations that if anybody wants uh, the Mariners, if somebody wants to take them, and they've got prospects to deal, yeah, the, the key to this is just banking prospects. That is all it is. It, it's having as many assets and chances to get star players and top draft picks as you can get, and and that's the whole point of trying this rebuild. Uh, bring up the kids yeah. and uh, get as many as you can and throw whatever you can against the wall and see what sticks. Because uh, especially in baseball, who knows who's going to make it in the majors, man. The, the jump from, from a college ball to the, to the, to the bigs is, is the hardest and the steepest of any of the major sports, and, and most of the guys never make it. There are three levels of, of teams filled with dudes trying to make the major leagues, and most of them just don't get here. So it it's really is about stockpiling as many as you can get uh, to, try mm-hmm. and, to try and make that happen. So who knows, man? This is a, a building as it goes, you know? Yeah, and b- before we move on, I just want to give a little credit to the, to the Mariners fan base real quick. I just did a little bit of research, and uh, I went back to 2013 to see the MLB attendance when, when the Astros were processing, and they they had a terrible, terrible attendance. So way, way worse with the, with the Mariners yeah. experiencing right now. So so got to give it up to the Mariners fans on that note. And I also just want to quickly uh, give a shout out to uh, our our number one draft pick. Uh, we had, we had a, we drafted George Kirby, right handed pitcher from Elon, uh, in the the super dra- in the draft this past week. So. Got to give it up to him. We're trying to get a new arm, and uh, he, he was pretty dominant last year. He was eight, eight and two with a two point seven five ERA. Uh, he's coming out of Elon, and uh, good luck to him. All three, uh, all three of the first draft picks from the Mariners, uh, young pitchers. That is, uh, that is how you win in baseball. You need the arms uh, in there. So that's that's what they take. Hey, by the way, one more note on this: the uh, the trade uh, of Jay Bruce opened up a roster spot and brought up Braden Bishop uh, from Tacoma. Oh, nice. Uh, a UW prospect. Uh, he is best known actually as the guy who uh, who was uh, who came in when Ichiro came out uh, during the last game there in Japan. That is that is how you might best know Braden Bishop. But Bishop down there at the Tacoma Rainiers was hitting 298 and 324 yeah, in May. So uh, welcome to the show, uh, Braden Bishop. Uh, good luck. It's going to be uh... hey. Funny thing. Funny thing is actually uh, we should, maybe we should transition to to the Rainiers here because. Uh, they actually, speaking of the Mariners having the worst month of May ever, the Rangers had their best month of May, and uh, they they actually have turned their season around. They're almost back to 500 after a, a five game series against uh, El Paso this this past week on the road. Now, of course, the highlight of that was the 24 to four loss, though. That is, I mean, the head- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a bad loss. But I mean, this team has turned it around. They were really far under 500, and uh, you know. They, they, they've taken first place in their division, so that's not bad. It's a pretty weak division, obviously, being the, being as they're twenty nine thirty speaking right now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what the Rainiers do. But like to see that you know the, these prospects are are doing well in AAA. I just want to see it transition a little bit better to the to the majors. Yeah, that is the key is is bringing the kids up. See what we got. So uh, we'll see you next. Braden Bishop, you are uh, you are next man up uh, uh, on this one, and then coming up from Tacoma. All right, yeah, so it's. Oh yeah, and speaking of the Rainiers, they got a five-game uh, series at home. They're, they're playing right now against Me- Memphis. Uh, they got a three-game series against Memphis, and then a four-game series against Nashville. They've been on the road for a while, so they're back at Cheney Stadium this week. So make sure make sure to get down there if you if you get a chance. And it looks like the uh, the Mariners game has gone final, eleven uh, five. The Astros all over the M's uh, at T-Mobile Park. They got a, a mm. couple more games here in this series against the Astros. Uh, I I. I think they got a shot at one of them just because, like I say, puncher's chance. But 
man, 11 to 5. That's another double digit game they're giving up. I heard this stat today, too. I think, again, it was Larry Stone who was talking about 20% of the, the games this year they've given up double digit runs. And that is, yeah. that is no good. You can't have that. So. Well, well, the Raiders, they, their game just went final, too. They lost 3 to 9 in Memphis in their first game of the 3 game series. Uh, they, they fell to 29 31 the season. So. That's some other bad news for tonight. <laughs> Two more chances this week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday against the Astros down there at T-Mobile Park, and then it is a, a road trip that will not be an easy one uh, for the Mariners. They got three games in Los Angeles to take on the Angels, uh, in Anaheim to take on the Angels, and they have a, a travel day, and then they got three games against the Minnesota Twins in Minnesota, a team that, uh, uh, that just pasted them uh, last time, one of the, the surprise hottest teams in, in baseball. Out of nowhere, the mm. Twins uh, put it together. Uh, then they head down to the A's. They should uh, at least win a game or two against the A's before coming home on the, on the 17th against the Royals. So uh, two more chances against the Astros this week to see the Mariners, and then they are on the road too, and, uh, and we don't have to watch them live. It's just <laughs> just on the TV. Uh, okay, so uh, from the Mariners to the the Sounders, let's uh, let's move into soccer. We got, uh, I think that's what we got left here uh, to talk about is is some soccer uh, down in Tacoma, down up here in Seattle. So let's start with the big uh, the big guys up here in Seattle. The Seattle Sounders at a game uh, this past Saturday against FC Dallas. Another loss for the Sounders here uh, against this one. They're second in a row, uh, uh, second loss. They are now third in the Western Conference. Uh, I don't know, Marco. This season's not going quite how we hoped. I mean, it's not the the word. The Sounders are usually uh, the team that gets off to a slow start. So, you know, I'm I'm actually pretty happy with the with how things are going. But man, last game was rough. We had two own goals, which is why we lost two to one uh, on the road. It, it was it was embarrassing. Two own goals, uh, a game we kind of should have had, and uh, you know, the, the it's just been a little rough go for the Sounders. They haven't really. Uh, been been on a winning tear since the beginning of the season, so um, you know a little interesting. Little maybe it's, uh, they're they're just finding their ground uh, as the middle of the season kind of swings around, but but definitely you know not 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 the very not a very exciting team. I'll tell you that much. Not 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 the most exciting games. Another uh, another metaphor game then here in Seattle actually as you're talking about uh, two own goals for this for the Sounders. It's a team that that should be doing better but just can't seem to win against the teams they should beat. Uh, went on that streak early in the season the. Uh, the, the ties, when a streak of ties here uh, early in the season. But still third in the Western Conference, uh, plenty, plenty of time left in this season. Not a bad team, just not playing as well as we would hope and not playing up to, you know, what they can. So still time to put it together. High hopes for the Sounders, you know? No, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, they got a game tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, against Montreal on the road at 430. They, they should be. Yeah, you know that that should be a win for them, but uh, you know things are, the way things are going. Who knows? Hey, dude, the soccer across the board uh, in the, in the area was was heartbreaking. Uh, not only did the Sounders have a rough game, uh, the Rain FC they 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 had a game this past weekend against uh, the Houston Dash down in Cheney Stadium, uh, and they tied it one to one in a in a in a very heartbreaking result because they gave up a 90th minute goal. Uh, at the you know last oh, second it, 90 yeah, it was, minute yeah and it, it was a, it was they, earlier in the game Houston actually uh had a penalty kick and, and they missed it and so it's just they had so many opportunities they should have won the game just the rain kind of just blew it I don't know what what happened there they kind of were in control so they, they actually had another opportunity to score right outside the box uh they almost made a penalty kick that just got saved so they almost took a two nothing lead but last minute uh, Christine Nair just put, sunk one with a laser shot uh, and tied the game, got and salvaged a point for for the dash. All right, so there is uh, no games this weekend for the Rain FC uh, because the uh, the U.S. Women's National Team are getting ready to uh, to begin their World Cup campaign uh, this week. They they take on Thailand on June 11th, and then uh, the next Rain game is actually June 15th. Uh, it's on the road against the Washington Spirit, uh, but. Again, they're not the only uh, they're not the only soccer team playing down there at uh, the baseball stadium, Cheney Stadium. And if the baseball team wasn't there, I got a hunch the other soccer team played at home this weekend too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Defiance they had two games this past weekend, uh, two two tie on Wednesday against LA two, and man, that was another heartbreaker. They actually had a two nothing lead most of the game, um, but then LA two scored two goals in the last five minutes, tie the game, salvage a point there. Very heartbreaking uh, on that end. And then uh, the next game, they lost 2-1 to one at home against El Paso uh, this past Saturday. 
Uh, Justin Dillon, who's at, who's been pretty good. He scored uh, f- uh, five goals in the last five games. Uh, he's been the only like real bright spot on the offensive end for the Defiance. But uh, just a, another heartbreaker, man. They, you know, they they they're finding ways to score and get on the board, which is better than you know what they had going in the first six games uh, when they actually had a 500 minute uh, goalless streak. But uh, you know, they they still just can't find a way to win it. And uh, the game against the uh, against El Paso this past week at home, they played well most of the game. Just uh, it's kind of like a fluke goal, gave it up, and they had opportunities, but just couldn't close the deal. All right, so they uh, the next game for uh, for the Defiance uh, is Saturday at Colorado Springs. Try and get it back together. Uh, try and just uh, one game at a time, get a win, and uh, and go from there uh, for the Defiance. They still got the best logo, man. You know, so it's still all, the best it's, logo. It's, 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 I love it's why it. It's fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, that's, I tell you what, man. That is that is a team I will support just because of the logo. It's fantastic. Uh, the the buoys, the sea monsters. I love it. Yeah. All right, so that is uh, that is just about what we got for you uh, this week here on the Wash. Uh, but before I let you go, uh, we we didn't have our our Seahawks segment. Guru couldn't join us this week; had a lot going on. Uh, and uh, the uh, Seahawks don't have a lot going on. They got the uh, the rookie <laughs> camp and the OTAs down there in Renton right now. However, Guru wanted me to mention that today, uh, Tuesday, June fourth, is uh, the officially the Seahawks' forty fifth birthday. It was on June fourth. Uh, 1974, 45 years ago today, that the uh, the franchise was announced. They, of course, didn't play their first game until uh, 1976, but the franchise was announced uh, today. We're going to get a poll up there on the uh, on the Seattle Sports Twitter, uh, Seattle S Sports uh, Twitter, at Seattle's Sports. Uh, we're going to get a poll up there on the uh, the greatest Seahawk. Guru's going to give us some choices. We're going to leave us a, a space for yours and, uh, and see if we get a, a greatest Seahawk poll here on the uh, the 45th birthday of the Seattle Seahawks, which everyone knows is is the team that this city will never lose. Uh, they uh, they <laughs> may have threatened once, but that is, that is, of all we say about Seattle sports fans, it doesn't apply to the Seahawks because that, uh, ever since I've been here, no matter how bad the team is, that is, that is, that is the fan base, man. They have always been there. Definitely, definitely. All right, Marku. One more before we get out of here. I got a shout out here, just real quick, to the uh, the Huskies. Back to the college for just a second. The women's rowing 2019 NCAA champions, women's rowing Huskies, who picked up their the the fifth a- a title for the school, uh, their second in three years, as they swept all three grand finals to win the NCAA championship. Uh, on the the varsity eight, the women's varsity eight rowing. So uh, congratulations to them uh, once again, national champions uh, in, in a sweep uh, all the way through. So congratulations, the uh, the varsity eight, the uh, second varsity eight, and the the varsity four. Uh, big wins uh, for the Huskies. Shout out to them. All right, Mark. Definitely. Who- that is our show for this week. We'll be back next week. We'll be back with uh, with more from the from the all. The- this is happening in Seattle sports. We'll have the guru back next week to talk a little uh, Seahawks. He's got some plan there. Uh, and uh, that's about it. If you're looking for me, Lestro, you can find me on Twitter every day at more or Lestro at more or Lestro. And don't forget to check out the Seattle sports account that is run by our man, Mark who that's Seattle sports, Seattle S sports uh, on there on Twitter. Uh, that's all I got this week. Mark who thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, go see Wolves. Go see Wolves, exactly. Remember, if it happens in Seattle sports, it comes out in the wash.